This is the eSports exclusive presented by DX Racer. Hello friends, Eric and Mathos here to bring you the latest and greatest in eSports and it is the second week of the Overwatch League. Day one got underway and the matches weren't too hype, but that opening set had some spice to it. Yeah, Philadelphia Fusion versus the uh, San Francisco Shock. Surprisingly competitive, unlike the other two sets where, uh, you know, Shanghai is garbage and Seoul is great. This one had some real bangers, specifically on Anubis. Shadowburn goes absolutely ballistic. Dragonblade coming out, kill on Dante already. Oh, he gets Nomi too. 15 player kill streak for Shadowburn, that as he huge. is the one who's gonna save this for Philadelphia. Make it 16, and we are all tied up. Philadelphia Fusion will win Temple of Anubis. First of all, he tanks a Dragonblade, duh. And then still slaughters everybody, gets the second Dragon Blade, keeps the point all without moving off the joint, staying alive the whole time. You can check that kill feed. Bodies are hitting the floor left and right. The man is an underrated savage. And quite frankly, the team as a whole is performing way beyond expectations. Yeah, so that was the saving grace. And that's how you want to drop people into week two is a, a hype setup, a hype match like that. So the numbers are still pretty decent. 150 to the 200k range going forward, which is fantastic if they can keep anything close to that going forward but uh this weekend lcs games start for na and eu are these actually going to affect any of the numbers on the friday or saturday well mostly the saturday uh saturday has some decent matches for overwatch league at least uh however you know lcs first day if there's any indication from the overwatch league and the excitement that pulled in all that everybody's waiting for lcs to kick in and they all just want to sit there and watch. Is there any kind of crossover? Well, realistically speaking, from the Twitter flaming, you can tell that a lot of people hate Overwatch or Love League, so there's a good chance that the crossover will be minimal, but nevertheless, you've got a huge casual audience in the Overwatch guys, and they've seemed to have adopted the uh, owl to their breasts quite comfortably. So, you know, maybe could be two different audiences, but I think both games are going to be doing real well for themselves, regardless of the fact. Yeah, and all the, a lot of these casual guys that are watching, you're gonna tune into Overwatch. You're not tuning into the LCS because you will no. have no idea what the hell is going on if you watch a game of League. At least Overwatch, there's some basic stuff you can understand. You know, people are getting shot in the head with crazy space guns. Yep. I can understand that if you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, so. I, I barely can follow Overwatch and I play the game on the regular. So yeah. shooting people in the face is all I know anything about. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Uh, going forward, you know, some people are kind of complaining about some of the maps, the reusage on some of these maps. Is that going to be an issue going forward in Overwatch? Yes and no. Um, Blizzard seems to believe that their two map pool, eight maps total, is uh, more friendly for the overall audience. And for teams, yes, all they have to do is practice two maps. But quite frankly, nobody wants to see Junkertown anymore. Every single analyst, fan, and player on the face of the earth is sick and tired of seeing that map. Even the teams that get the one win only get it off Junkertown. It's an anomalous map at best. And a loser pick system at the bare minimum would allow for these 4-0 blowouts to slowly, maybe 3-1, maybe 3-2. It'll actually make fourth games relevant in some kind of variety. Blizzard has absolutely no interest in doing it. Fingers crossed they at least rotate the eight map selection out for the next split, because if we're watching Junkertown for the entire first season, guaranteed those numbers are gonna fall through the floor. Yeah, I'm sure Blizzard will do some adapting in between all these splits and kinda, they gotta figure, they gotta change something up at some point because that's Desperate. a lot of games and people will get bored. Uh, PUBG news! Oh, I know everyone's been missing out on the eSport wonder that is PUBG. It's gonna be being played at IEM Katowice. It's, got, it's there. Yeah, it's a $50,000 tournament, Ooh. folks. 16 teams, invitations have already been sent out for the big boys, but you're one of the seven remaining teams that don't happen to have a contract. You actually can enter up for the qualifiers this weekend, January 20th and the 21st. Three spots from North America, three spots from Europe, and one from South America you can qualify up. Play through the tournaments this weekend, and it'll finish up next weekend on the 28th. And you can get yourself a spot at IAM Katowice. Should be pretty sweet, especially if you care about PUBG. They did a, a, a progressive job in the last tournament. Hopefully things turn out to be even better than the last time. Yeah, each tournament's gotten a lot better. And you know, there's a, there's a little too much pressure on a lot of these tournaments because they're so far and few in between for PUBG. So hopefully it goes pretty well for them. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. No uh, desert map though. No desert. <laughs> Only Who the, the desert map? Yeah. But, eh, too bad. It's gonna be there probably at some point and you'll be upset. 
All right, the Boston Major and CSGO. 100 Thieves had a bit of a time getting started in this tournament. Oh my goodness. Yeah, a bit of a time getting started is an understatement. They're not even playing in it. Turns out that uh, the Brazilian CSGO core from the Immortals team that 100 Thieves picked up specifically for legendary status, and let's not split any hairs about that, couldn't get their visas in order and were unable to play in the tournament. So now you're stuck in a predicament where 100 Thieves has to double down on nitroglycerin and pray that it doesn't blow up in their face the next time they play without any fast track to the next round of the tournament. Uh, however, that gap creates a big problem and they worked it out as such. Uh, Swiss best of ones, not a lot of people are big fans because there is no reseeding in these things. Cloud9 and G2 got an easy 3-0 sweep and as a result they have to play themselves in the next bracket. Team Liquid, on the other hand, with their coach, due to a player not being able to play for the rest of the week, uh, they grind out eight matches to get themselves in to take 100 Thieves' last spot. It was a clawing battle, playing through all sorts of like QB Fire and Avangar and a bunch of other random CIS teams. End of the day, the brackets are all set up. Everything's lined up for a January 19th pop through another Swiss best of one. Can we please? Get some reseeding. I'm begging you. <laughs> it's getting out of hand. Yeah, they'll do something to figure out to improve it. Or they won't, they, and we're stuck with it again. So far, they haven't done a thing, and they don't care to. However, Star Ladder is going to do a best of three Swiss for their finals. So, uh, you know, at least we'll weed out some of the inconsistencies in, in random draw best of ones. Uh, more, more FPS news. Call of Duty, uh, Optic, and Splice. Eh, they didn't do so well in their last tournament. No, they got dumpstered. They didn't even get top eight. And who put them in the dumpster? Echo Fox. That's right, Rick Fox has actually got himself a squad that's starting to put up some real numbers. Uh, unfortunately for those guys, they ended up getting top eight, not much further than that. However, the real winners, Team Caliber, had themselves a razor thin victory over Luminosity. Luminosity ended up losing to them in the winner's finals, pulled it up through Rise Nation in the, in the loser's bracket, came back, 3-2, super close, really sweet set. But uh, uh, Team Caliber and uh, United, yet another close set. A little rivalry starting up over there. There's a lot of big names coming out of this thing that aren't Optic, which is really a surprise. And Optic seems to want to make me a liar because I was bigging them up a few weeks ago. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, they're doing it just to make you look a fool. But, I, uh, I feel like it. There were some great matches, but the highlight of this whole event came from Team Epsilon. You got your boy Dave, who had this absolutely fantastic interview. Losing to Envy, like that was a team we came in thinking we really needed a beat. Uh, but that, we got absolutely smashed by them. I don't want to talk about that. But Optic game was pretty close. Um, I did expect to get beat by them, to be honest with you. But I'm surprised we did so well because we're not the best at the moment. I think our team's just slow at learning, really. Are you worried you're not going to make the Pro League if you don't play very well this weekend, though? Oh, that is a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a problem, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but mate, yeah, you know, it's we just have to play the same as in Fusion. I don't expect to do good this event because we ain't very good. But <laughs> as long as we get the Pro League, I think it's good. I think it's good. <laughs> uh, is there any teams that you quite like to play this weekend? <laughs> Oh my god, everyone's gonna beat us. <laughs> I mean, you gotta respect this guy's honesty. I love it. It's refreshing in an entire division where there's like maybe two personalities. And you can finally get a guy who's just matter of fact, lays it all out for you. I love it. I love guys like this and I love any kind of interview, by the way. Thank you, Dexerito, bringing the heat. I hate the scripted answers, uh, yeah, we gotta prove as a team, you know, team play, synergy, stuff like that. I, I love when guys going. go off the book. Yeah, it's, it's nonsense. It's this is great. Amazing. Uh, there's so many esports going on this weekend. It's, I don't know how you're going to pick what you're going to watch. You got LCS making its debut, more Overwatch League, week two, of course. The Hearthstone World Championship. We didn't even talk about that. That gets underway this weekend. Boston Major with CSGO. There's a lot to watch. Plenty. But uh, what else can you do other than sit in your DX Racer chair, boys? You got to sit in your DX racer chair. If you're going to be sitting and watching esports for hours on hours, you got to have good posture. You got to keep that spine aligned. And the best way to do that is with these DX racer chairs. And if you go on DXRacer.com right now and use the promo code SHOTCALLERS, you're going to get 15% off. That is something you got to do because 15% off is great. Undeniable. It's my favorite number, the number 15. Uh, that's it. 
For the Esports Exclusive, Eric and Mathos here bringing you the latest and greatest in esports. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. This is the Esports Exclusive, presented by DX Racer.